Okay guys, so here we're going to look at stationary points, um, or in the case of uh, functions in terms of um, when a particle is stationary or when it's turning around, um, that's when the derivative equals zero. So here, the first one, a particle is moving in a straight line, its position x meters relative to the origin at time t seconds is given by that function. Find the particle's maximum distance from the origin. So, in doing so with this one, we've got to check the endpoints as well as any point in between. So, if I say x of 0 is 9 times 0 minus 1 third 0 cubed, which is 0. So, when time equals 0, it's at the origin. When time equals 4, if we put that in, we get 9 times 4, which is 36 minus one third of four cubed, which is 64. So we get 36 minus 64 on three. So what we can do is convert this to be over three as well. So if I times 36 by three, I get 108 on three minus, that's right, 90, yep, uh, 64 on three, which is, 44 and 3. And that is, um, how many 3s go into 40? 13, 19, 13, 14. 14 and 2 thirds. Okay, and when, in between there, to see the maximum distance that it's away, we can just use the derivative. So dx dt, which is 9 minus t squared. Now this has stationary points when dx dt equals zero. So if I've got three squared minus t squared equals zero, I get three plus t, three minus t. So therefore t equals negative three or three. Now we know time cannot, can't be negative. So the only other time it could be further away from the origin is when t equals three. So let's test it. When t equals 3, we look at this. x is 9 times 3 minus 1 third of 3 cubed. So I get 27 minus 1 third of 27, which is 9. 27 minus 9 is 18. So in this case here, the furthest time, the furthest it is away from the origin is when t equals 3 and the actual distance itself is 18. So that's your distance. Now I just want to show you graphically 9t minus 1 third t squared. So 9x minus 1 third x squared. And we want to restrict it. 0 is less than or equal to x which is less than or equal to 4. So we sketch this function. Now, because I'm between zero and four, what we can do is we can lock it in between zero and four. And then if you go zoom auto, it'll just fit that graph in perfectly. Now I forgot something that should be cubed. So if we go zoom auto. Okay, so that's better. So we want to find what, this is the distance it is away from the origin. So up here, sorry, from, from the, um, x-axis to the, this point, that's the distance it is from the origin. So the maximum distance on this domain occurs at this point here, which is when, we can have a look, analysis g solve max, that's when x equals 3 and y equals 18, which is what we just found. What I was talking about before is if we let this graph go, say, to 6, it's not going to turn around, it's always going to keep going down. There could be another value where it's bigger. Like if t, if this was between negative 6 and 6, you can see when it's negative 6, um, it might be bigger, it might not, I can't remember. Zoom out, zoom out. So when it's negative 6, I think it's exactly the same value. But if we went to negative 7, it would be higher. 
So when you check and see a maximum distance, you've got to check the endpoints. Maximum or minimum distance, you've got to check the endpoints and any point in between. If it's any point in between the endpoints, it's going to occur at a maximum or a minimum. Okay. So here, find the stationary points of the following function. So dy dx is equal to 12 minus 4x. We know dy dx equals 0 for stationary points. So 12 minus 4x equals 0. Bring your 4x to the other side. 4x equals 12 x equals 3. It says find the stationary point. So when x equals 3, sub it back into there. y equals 9 plus 12 times 3 minus 2 times 3 squared. 9 plus 36 minus 2 times 9, which is 18. So that's 27. So our stationary point is at 3, 27. This function here, we only want it for t is greater than zero. So let's have a look. dy dt equals 6t squared minus 10t minus 4. dy dt equals zero for a stationary point. So 6t squared minus 10t minus 4. Let's divide it all through by 2 to make it easier to factorize. Okay, so we've got 3t, t, negative 2 and plus 1. That's going to be 3t squared minus 6t plus 1t is minus 5t minus 1. So therefore we get t equals negative 1 third or 2. It can't be negative because t has to be greater than 0. When t equals 2, y equals 2 times 8 because 2 cubed is 8. Minus 5 times 4, minus 4 times 2, plus 13. 16 minus 20, minus 8, plus 13. That's minus 28, and that's plus 29, so it's 1. So we've got the point 2, 1. So that's our stationary point, or our turning point for that graph. Okay, this one here. dy dx equals 3 minus 3x squared dy dx equals 0 for stationary point. So 3 minus 3x squared equals 0. Bring your 3x squared to the other side. 3x squared equals 3. x squared equals 1. x equals plus or minus 1. Now because this doesn't have to do with time, we can't just assume we get rid of the negatives. So when x equals 1, y equals... 4 plus 1 is 7, minus 1 is 6, so I've got the point 1, 6. And then when x equals negative 1, y equals 4, minus 3. Minus 1 cubed is minus 1, but when you times it by negative, it's plus 1. So I've got 5 minus 3, which is 2, so I've got the point negative 1, 2. So there are stationary or turning points. Okay, so it looks like we're going to get a few more stationary points. Find the stationary points of the following function. So we only want it between 0 and 2 pi. So dy dx equals, when we draw a sine, we get cos. So 2 cos 2x. Um, dy dx equals 0 for stationary point. Therefore, 2 cos 2x equals 0. Cos 2x equals 0. So, if cos 2x equals 0, if we think about a cos graph, when does it equal 0? At pi on 2, there, and at 3 pi on 2. But because we're going to divide by 2, we've got to go around the circle again. So we're going to get 5 pi on 2, because I'm adding a period plus 4 pi on 2. If I add it to that, I get 7 pi on 2. So from here, when we divide the 2 across, I get x equals pi on 2, sorry, pi on 4. Um, 
3 pi and 4 and 5 pi and 4 and 7 pi and 4. So they're all on my turning points. Now we can cheat. If you think of a sine graph, we know that the first point is going to be at its maximum. So we're going to get pi on 4, 1, because this graph has a amplitude of 1. The next one's going to be 3 pi on 4, negative 1, which is going to be that point. Then it's going to be 5 pi on 4, 1. And the last point is going to be 7 pi on 4, negative 1. So don't, don't make yourself work if you don't have to. Okay, here, dy dx. Get a bit bigger. Okay, so when I derive e to the 2x, I get 2e to the 2x. And then when I derive 1, uh, x, I get negative 1. dy dx equals 0 for a stationary point. So I get 2e to the 2x minus 1 equals 0. I get 2e to the 2x equals 1. e to the 2x equals 1 half. From here, we get 2x equals log e of 1 half. x equals log e. Oops, I forgot my half at the front. So a half log e 1 half. Okay. Now, if we put that into the equation, y equals e to the 1, 2 times 1 half log e 1 half minus a half log e 1 half. Um, the, that's going to cancel the 2 times a half. I've got e to the log e, which cancel each other out. So I get a half minus log e, sorry, minus a half log e one half. So our stationary point is at a half log e one half, then a half minus one half log e one half. There's lots of halves in there. Don't forget, if you want to get rid of those halves, um, log e of one half is the same as log e of two to the negative one, which is negative log e of Two. So we could say that is negative a half log e two, because I can bring that, make that two to the negative one, and then bring the negative one down to the front. Um, and then you could have a half plus, because when I bring that two to the top and I get negative one, a half log e of two. You don't have to do that though, but it's just, yeah, something that you can do. Okay, I want to derive this and find the stationary point. So, dy dx, we've got to use the product rule. I will do the slow product rule, just for anyone who needs to sake. u equals x, v equals log e2x. du dx is 1, dv dx. When I derive a log, it's the derivative of the top, so 2 on anything that's in the bracket. So it's 1 on x. dy dx, we know is v du dx plus u dv dx. So it's v log e 2x times 1 plus u times dv dx, which is 1 on x. So our derivative is log e 2x plus 1, because those x's will cancel. Okay, so that's what dy dx is. dy dx equals 0 for a stationary point. We know log e 2x plus 1 has to equal 0. Log e 2x has to equal negative 1. Uh, we get 2, 2x equals e to the negative 1. So x equals 1 on 2, a half, and then e on the bottom. So x equals 1 on 2e. Y 
equals 1 on 2e log e of 1 on 2e. Now, um, what's going to happen here? We can just leave it like that. So 1 on 2e. Oh, hang on. It's log 1 on 2e, log e 2 times 1 on 2e. So the 2s would cancel. I could change that to be 1 on 2e, log e of e to the negative 1. Because we know e on the bottom, 1 on e is the same as e to the negative 1. We can bring our negative 1 down to the front. So we have negative 1 on 2e, log e of e, which of course we know is 1. So our stationary point is 1 on 2e, negative 1 on 2e, because that's our y value. Okay, here we're using the fact that we know, so it says here the curve with equation, it's a cubic, it passes through the point 0, 05 and with a stationary point at 2, 7. Now, whilst you might not see that, this is actually giving you two bits of information. It's telling you when x equals 2, y equals 7, but because it's a stationary point, when x equals 2, we know that dy dx equals 0, and we know when x equals 0, y equals 5 from this point here. So we've got three unknowns, and we've got three bits of information to find out what they are. Now the first bit, obviously, is this one. When x equals 0, y equals 5. So when x equals 0, y equals 5. So we get 5 equals 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus c. So therefore we know c equals 5. So our equation is now y equals x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus 5. Now we know when x equals 2, y equals 7. So I use the point 2, 7. And that gives me 7 equals 2 cubed, which is 8, plus 2 squared times a, which is 4a, plus 2 times b, plus 5. Let's rearrange it. So here I've got 8 and 5. Bring it to the other side. So we get 4a plus 2b is equal to 7 minus 13, because that's going to be 13. Bring it to the other side, it's minus 13. So I get negative 6. Now, they're all even, so I'm just going to divide through by 2. So I get 2a plus b equals negative 3, and we'll call that equation 1. Okay, the next thing we know is... When x equals 2, dy dx equals 0. So first let's find dy dx. So dy dx is 3x squared, because when I derive that I get 3x squared, plus 2ax plus b. And we know when x equals 2, dy dx equals 0. So we can sub that information in. So I get 3 times 4 plus 2a times 2, plus b is equal to 0. We get 4a plus b, those two things. I'm going to bring that to the other side, is equal to negative 12. From there, 4a plus b is equal to negative 12, equation 2. I'm going to say equation 2, take away equation 1. So 4a take away a is 2a. Negative 12 minus minus 3 is minus 9. So A equals negative 9 on 2. When A equals negative 9 on 2, put in this one, I get 2 times negative 9 on 2 plus B is equal to negative 3. Here the 2s will cancel, and when I bring that to the other side, I get plus 9. So we get b equals negative 3 plus 9, which is 6. So our equation is y equals x cubed. Actually, it didn't ask us for the equation. It said find the values of a, b, and c. So we can just say 
A equals negative 9 on 2. B equals negative 6. C equals 5. Now I've also done it on the calc down here. Um, what I'm going to do, we know our equation is x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c. So to put that in, let's clear this. It was already clear. So I've got x cubed plus a times, make sure you put a times, x squared plus b times x plus c. Highlight it, interactive, define. So that's f of x. Now, make sure that none of the variables are already defined. A, B, C, so it looks good. Okay, so then we can go into simultaneous equations. We know F of 0 is equal to 5. We know F of 2 is equal to 7. And we know D, DX of F of X equals zero given x equals two. Don't put the x equals two inside, it's got to be outside. So the derivative of f of x equals zero when x equals two, and we want to solve for a, b, c. Enter. So there's our answers, negative nine on two, six and five. So that's our equation. Okay, so that is chapter 10C. We're nearly there.